This is your USMNT Abroad Weekend update from October 6th to October 8th of 2023. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo, and welcome to Tactical Manager TV, and welcome to the US Men's National Team Abroad Series, where every Monday we update you on how the Yanks did abroad over the weekend. But before we start, there is one quick fun fact that I want to provide to you, I want to give you, because fun facts are fun, and fun is good. That's why they're called fun facts right? So hear me out. In these three leagues that I'm going to mention, there are Americans as protagonists of the clubs that are leading the league. So in the Eredivisie, PSV leads the league with Des, Tillman, and Pepe playing for them, two of them playing a massive role recently. In Italy, we have Milan leading the league ahead of Inter Milan, with Musa and Pulisic playing a massive role. And in France, Balogun for Monaco, they lead the league in Liga even ahead of PSG. If you go back 10 years, something like this would be unheard of. And it's truly amazing. And now we can finally start with the updates. But before we start, I want to kindly ask you to hit that like button so we can try to hit 1,000 likes in this video as well. And keep in mind, it's US Men's National Team Week. We play Germany on Saturday, and I hope we win. Okay, let's roll the intro and let's start with the updates. As always, let's start the top five leagues. And the first league that I'm going to talk about here is the English Premier League. So the first two players I want to mention here are Matt Turner from Nottingham Forest and Chris Richards from Crystal Palace because they faced each other over the weekend. On Saturday, Matt Turner started and went the full 90 minutes for Nottingham Forest during their 0-0 draw with Crystal Palace. For the same match, Chris Richards got 15 minutes off the bench for Crystal Palace. And look at it this way. One's a goalkeeper, the other one's a center back and both teams got a clean sheet, so I'll take that as a win. Next up will be the Fulham boys, A-Rob and Tim Ream, along with Austin Trusty that plays for Sheffield United because they also clashed over the weekend. On Saturday, A-Rob and Tim Ream both started and both played the full 90 minutes for Fulham during their 2-1 win over Sheffield United. Unfortunately, the goal that Sheffield scored was an own goal from A-Rob. It was a nice own goal, by the way. No, seriously, it was a good finish. Just on the wrong net. And just to make one thing clear, A-Rob is healthy, but he's dealing with a hernia, which is why he will be rested during the US Men's National Team camp, which is the reason why he's not in the roster, but still playing for Fulham. As for Austin Trusty, he started and played the full 90 minutes for Sheffield United. Overall, he looked competent, but the team is just awful. Like literally, Sheffield is a EFL championship team, pretending to be an English Premier League team. And I don't say that trying to offend any Sheffield fans, but it, it kind of is the truth and they're probably going to be relegated. So Trusty will probably continue to get minutes, you know, even though they lost. One, because he did fine in this match. And two, because Basham, one of their center backs, had a horrific ankle injury and will be out for some time seriously i'm wishing him a speedy recovery that was tough to watch and i don't know for how long he'll be out for but that, that was just terrible so thoughts and prayers to him that was awful to watch and i can't imagine the pain he was feeling his ankle i'm not gonna get into details okay let's move on tyler adams he's injured he'll be out for a couple months probably won't play in 2023 anymore so let's move on to luca coleosho from burnley on Saturday, Kuliosho started off on the bench and was subbed in at the 61st minute for Burnley during their 4-1 loss to Chelsea. And it looks like Chelsea is getting back on track. We'll see for how long. Regardless, losing 4-1 to Chelsea in 2023 is not a good look. But listen, Kuliosho actually looked fairly dangerous when he was subbed in. Then towards the end of the match, he was a bit quiet. He's gaining some valuable experience this season in the Premier League, and I'm very much looking forward to him playing for the US Men's National Team of the future. Unless he ends up with Italy, which I don't think he will. Speaking of Italy, let's go to the Serie A and talk about the American players that play in the Italian first division. And the first two I want to talk about are Christian Pulisic and Yunus Musa from Milan. On Saturday, Yunus Musa started and played the full 90 minutes for Milan during their 1-0 win over Genoa in the Italian first division. As for Pulisic, he came off the bench at halftime for Milan as he was being rested. Because, you know, when water hits your ass, you learn how to swim. And Pioli quickly learned how to swim by sending Christian Pulisic and Rafael Leon at halftime 
and it worked with a ton of drama. Let's put it this way, the first half was awful and it was quite clear that the rotation was simply not working. Chukwueze, Okafor and Jovic weren't great. To be fair, Yunus Musa also struggled in the first half. The game was actually mostly boring until the last 15 minutes or so. It wasn't until the 87th minute where Christian Pulisic would score to rescue Milan from a 0-0 draw with Genoa. He would score after a cross from Yunus Musa. Pulisic would settle the ball with a great touch, followed by a great turn and an even better shot with his left foot to get Milan the only goal of the match. So there was some controversy in regards to if the ball hit Pulisic's arm or hand, whatever. This is what I will say, and I'm sure Diego Maradona would say the exact same. There was a little bit with the chest of Pulisic and a little bit with the hand of God or arm of God in this case. Listen, it might have hit his hand or his arm, whatever. It might have not. Regardless, the VAR check and the goal stand it like they gave the goal. So for this specific case, I'm just going to trust the professionals. But let me know what you think. Did you think that it hit Pulisic's arm or not? I don't think it matters. The goal counted. After that, the game went into chaos. Both goalkeepers got a red card. Giroud became a goalkeeper, which made him the best looking goalkeeper in Serie A's history. The ball hit the post, but Milan came out with a 1-0 victory and they now lead the first division of Italy, two points ahead of their rivals, Inter Milan. And boy, do I love the Serie A. Now let's talk about Weston McKennie and Tim Weah from Juventus. On Saturday, McKennie and Weah both started and played the full 90 minutes for Juventus during their 2-0 win over Torino in the Serie A. We finally got both of them to start together and Tim Weah played as a right wing back and McKennie played as a central midfielder. In terms of performance, they were both okay, nothing bad, nothing special. Weah seemed to be a bit more involved in the game, playing as a right wing back. And Weston McKennie also usually is more involved in the game when he plays as a right wing back even though the central midfield position is more of his natural position so i'll just say this both of them overall had average performances nothing bad nothing great just average now let's leave italy and head to germany and talk about the americans in the bundesliga so why don't we start with Gio reyna and brendan aronson Gio reyna from borussia dortmund and brendan aronson from union berlin on saturday Gio reyna start off on the bench for dortmund and brendan aronson start off at the bench for union berlin during borussia dortmund's 4-2 win okay so in terms of performances of the americans what happened? I'll start with Brendan Aronson. He came off the bench around minute 55 and he did not look good once again for Union Berlin. He got bullied on the ball quite a bit, had an opportunity to score and missed the target again. He provided lots of running, hustle, but not much more. It's really not been a good season for Brendan so far. In regards to this performance, I'm going to give him a 2 out of 10. And the reason I gave him a 2 out of 10 is because I gave him some good hustle points. As for Gio Reyna, he was subbed in around the 64th minute, so first I'd like to say this. Welcome back, Gio. It's good to see him back on the field. He played mainly as a right winger, and he looked okay, sharp on the ball, but seems like he's still getting back into rhythm. He was actually involved in one of the goals where he blasted a cross from the right flank. The goalkeeper cut the cross, and then Dortmund scored off the rebound. So overall, it was a good return from Gio Reyna. Not perfect, but considering he hasn't played for the past four months, I would say it was a good one, and I'll give this season debut a 7 out of 10. Solid return, and I expect him to get minutes for the U.S. Men's National Team this camp, but mostly and probably off the bench. But we'll talk about that on the match previews for Germany and Ghana that are coming up this week. Next up is John Brooks from Hoffenheim. On Saturday, Brooks started and played the full 90 minutes for Hoffenheim during their 3-2 win over Werder Bremen. This has been a strong start of the season for Hoffenheim with five wins and just two losses. Next up, we have Pifak and Joe Scali from Borussia Mönchengladbach. Friday, Pifak started and played 64 minutes for Gladbach during their 2-2 draw with Mainz. However, the big story here is Joe Scali. He starts off the bench and once again is subbed in in this match, but this time around the 79th minute. And at the 88th minute, he scored a golazo from outside of the box. From a long range, beautiful shot to tie the game for Gladbach and get them a point. Hopefully, this goal off the bench gets him to start for future matches. Now seriously, that goal was a beauty. Now after Scali, let's talk about Kevin Paredes from Wolfsburg. And if you made it this far in the video, hopefully you hit the like button already to help us hit 1,000 subscribers. Actually, not subscribers, 1,000 likes in this video. We have more than 1,000 subscribers. 
Okay, so Kevin Paredes. On Saturday, Paredes started off on the bench and was subbed in around the 79th minute for Wolfsburg during their 3-1 loss to Stuttgart. Stuttgart is actually having one heck of a season, so I'm not surprised that they won here. They have six wins and one loss only in the first seven matches, while Wolfsburg, they're doing all right. They have four wins and three losses. Lastly, in Germany, we have Paxton Aronson from Eintracht Frankfurt and Leonard Maloney from Heidenheim that clashed over the weekend, and Maloney will be in the U.S. Men's National Team camp. On Sunday, Maloney started and played the full 90 minutes for Heidenheim during their 2-0 loss to Eintracht Frankfurt. As for Paxton Aronson, he stayed on the bench the entire match, and he will be with the U.S. Men's National Team U23 camp that will be a preparation camp for the 2024 Olympics. But enough of Germany, let's head to Spain. España to talk about Luca de la Torre from Celta de Vigo. On Sunday, Luca started and played the full 90 minutes for Celta de Vigo that are really struggling in the Liga in the relegation zone right now during their 2-2 draw with Getafe. For this match, Luca got the assist for Celta's first goal. And after we leave Spain, we go to France to talk about floating Balogun from Monaco. On Saturday, Balogun started and played 82 minutes for Monaco during their 3-1 win over his former club, Rams, which I very much prefer Monaco right now. Their name is far easier to pronounce, but that's totally irrelevant for this video because it's not really your problem. What matters here is Balogun scored once again for Monaco. He hit a powerful strike in the box that was deflected and went in. Now, I do want to add also that Balogun's off-the-ball movement is actually quite remarkable. The more I watch him, the more impressed I am. He makes the right runs, finds the right place to be, and is mostly effective when he gets there in creating goal-scoring opportunities. He has a unique skill set that none of our other center forwards have, and that is not an exaggeration. He's coming off a 21-goal season in Liga, the French League, and this season, he already has three goals and one assist in just five matches, and he only played 200 170 minutes. When you take into account the fact that he wasted two penalty kicks in one match, he could have easily had four to five goals by now. Ignore that, look at the big picture, and you will see that he's been off to a fantastic start with Monaco. We're done with the top five leagues, now let's go to the Redivisie in the Netherlands and talk about our boys that play for PSV, and they are Ricardo Pepe, Malik Tillman, and Serginho Dest. On Saturday, Dest and Tillman both started for PSV during their 4-0 win over Sparta Rotterdam. Tillman played 73 minutes and Serginho Dest played the full 90 minutes while Ricardo Pepe got no minutes. So at least Pepe will be very well rested for the U.S. Men's National Team camp. Glass half full. In regards to the game, I thought Malik Tillman and Serginho Dest were very good. Tillman had some good combination plays with De Jong, got some shots on target, and was heavily involved in PSV's offense. And most importantly, he scored. Where Lozano set up De Jong and De Jong assisted Tillman in the box that ended up with a nice finish and Malik Tillman got the goal for PSV there. The only down moment on the match for Tillman was when he committed a silly foul that got PSV a goal to be disallowed, which took away the assist from Serginho Dest. But still, it was a bit of a weird call from the VAR because the foul that Tillman committed was like 20 seconds prior to the goal and was also off the ball, but it's whatever. It doesn't really affect his overall performance. And I want to also add this and pay attention so you understand the point I'm about to make, because this is actually kind of important from, you know, an analysis perspective of the U.S. men's national team. With Malik Tillman doing well for PSV and Gio Reyna staying healthy, there's absolutely no reason for us to have the MMA midfield as the number one U.S. men's national team option this cycle. The MMA midfield is the one with Musa, Adams, and Weston McKinney. You see, that three-man midfield needs a destroyer, which is more of a defender, right? A box-to-box -box midfielder and a creator. The creator has to be Tillman or Gio Reyna. When you play the MMA midfield, you have one destroyer, which is Tyler Adams, and two box-to-box -box midfielders, which are Yunus Musa and Weston McKinney. In some very specific situations, the MMA midfield could be an option. It could be justified and makes sense, but it cannot be the undisputed number one option like it was late in the 2022 cycle. And I hope what I just said made total sense. I hope. Still in the Netherlands, we have Taylor Booth from Utrecht. On Friday, Taylor was back on the bench for Utrecht, but he stayed there the full 90 minutes as he's coming back from an injury, which is fine for now. His brother, Zach Booth, stayed on the bench pretty much the full 90 minutes for Volendam, the team that faced Utrecht, but he was sent in the 87th minute, and he did almost score despite the limited amount of minutes. Lastly, in the Netherlands, we have Jordi Mihailovic, and he stayed on the bench the full 90 minutes once again for AZ Alkmaar as they defeated Ajax. But listen to this. 
Ajax is actually in the relegation zone of the Eredivisie this season. I understand they have a game in hand, but let's be honest. None of us expected Ajax to be in the relegation zone of the Dutch league at any point of the season. But let's leave the Netherlands and head back to the United Kingdom. Let's go to England for the English second division. And Josh Sargent is injured, so we have nothing to say about Sargent at the time of this recording. But let's go to Haji Wright from Coventry. On Saturday, Haji Wright started and played 72 minutes for Coventry during their 1-1 draw with Norwich in the EFL Championship, the second division of England. And he would have faced Sargent if Sargent was healthy. Still in the UK, let's go to Scotland and talk about Cameron Carter-Vickers from Celtic. On Saturday, Carter-Vickers started and played 72 minutes for Celtic during their 3-1 win over Kilmarnock in Scotland. He's back, he's healthy, and he will be with the US Men's National Team camp this October. He did also come back from injury during the midweek for the Champions League where he made a crucial mistake that led to Lazio scoring and winning the match, defeating Celtic. So that was bad, but I'm not really a Celtic fan, so I don't care that much. I was just happy to see him back. Now let's quickly skim through the Americans that play in Belgium. And we'll start with Gabriel Slonina and Sam Vines because they clashed over the weekend. Slonina plays for Eupen and Vines plays for Antwerp. On Sunday, Slonina started and played the full 90 minutes for Eupen during their 4-1 loss to Antwerp. Now, Eupen are really bad and Slonina has been busy all season long. Sam Vines plays for Antwerp, but he was not available due to injury. Still in Belgium, we have Mark McKenzie from Genk, and on Sunday, McKenzie started and played the full 90 minutes for Genk during their 1-1 draw with Ghent. I really hate when Genk and Ghent face each other. Like, seriously, th their names are almost identical, and they almost sound the same. It's, it's really annoying. I don't know why Belgium has two teams that are almost quite literally the same name. Just change the name of one of them. Lastly, we have Brian Reynolds from Westerlo, also in Belgium. On Saturday, Brian Reynolds started and played 78 minutes for Westerlo during their 1-0 win over Kortrick. Reynolds got the assist for their goal this match and was picked the man of the match. Now this week, I will be covering the Italian second division because some Americans decided to score. So why don't we start the boys from Venezia, Tanner Testman and Gianluca Busio. On Saturday, Venezia got a 3-2 win against Parma in the second division of Italy. Busio and Tanner Tessman both scored a goal each, but also, unfortunately, Busio conceded a penalty kick. However, they still win. Here's the thing. This is a massive win for Venezia as they are now top three in the Italian second division, which means they would get promoted to the first division, the Serie A. And by the way, Parma was in first place. Actually, they still are in first place at the time of this recording. So this was a massive win. Still in the second division of Italy, you have Christopher Lund that plays for Palermo, the left back from the U.S. Men's National Team. On Saturday, Christopher Lund started and played 64 minutes for Palermo during their 2-0 win. Now, Palermo, unlike Venezia, they're in second place in the Italian second division, which means Palermo and Venezia are on track to get promoted. The last player we're going to cover in this video is not a player that plays in Europe. He's a player that plays in South America, and that is Johnny Cardoso from Internacional. After all, he's also an American abroad. On Sunday, Johnny started and played 78 minutes for Inter during their 3-2 win over Gremio in the Grenal Derby. This is actually a massive game in Brazil. This is a big-time win for Internacional and a quick bounce back after getting eliminated from the Copa Libertadores. All right, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to drop a like before you go. And don't forget, this week we will be doing a match preview for the USA versus Germany match. We also possibly have an interview to be released with Caden Clark. There's a lot to talk about with him as well. And we'll be doing a live watch along for Germany versus the United States on Saturday. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.